I heard that shady characters hang out here. So who are you and how do you fit in? No one special. I'm just a facilitator. A facilitator? People who come in here tend to have very specific interests. I help accommodate. Oh, okay. Mama's like, uh, an informant. That's right. And I won't charge you this time. Just promise to get the bastards who did this to Ren for me. I promise. Not really. Oh, don't worry, honey. I don't bite. I'm only aggressive when it comes to men 20 through mm, 65. That's a pretty wide range. Gotta widen my net for a catch like you, Date, honey. <laughs> I think I'll ignore that one. I think I'll ignore it as well. Yeah, I mean, at some fish pocket they served alcohol, but I've never been to a bar like this. Well, I would hope not. You're in elementary school. Well, Daddy invited me along sometimes, but I was too shy to go. Good call. I was planning on going one day when I was old enough to drink. I wanted to go to a bar with Daddy. Have you heard any rumors about Renju? Anything about grudges, disputes? Is it okay to talk in front of Mizuki? Yes, I want to be here. Trust me, you couldn't drag her away. If you say so. Apparently, Ren had some connections with the Kumakura gang. A gang? Yeah, real rough customers. This is their turf. So Daddy was involved with gangsters. Mizuki, that company Shoko was running, were they also tied to the Kumakuras? I don't know. Hmm. Not bad. Hey, that's good. I want you to keep this place open as long as you can. It makes me feel sad and old when a place I used to visit closes down. Well, then, you should visit more often. I could hook you up, in more ways than one. Just the one way is fine, thanks. Well, there was the watch incident. I'm sure you remember that one. Watch incident? You don't remember? Your drunk ass spilled your beer on Ren's watch. Ren was furious, yelling about how this watch is more important than my life, or whatever. He blew up on you. That was the only time I've ever seen Ren that mad. That's why I remember it so well. Was it this watch? Yeah, that's it. Why do you have it? Was it... At the scene? Ren was given that watch by his lover. It was an anniversary gift, I think. Lover? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot Mizuki was here. No, it's fine. But of course, it wasn't an affair. This was all after he was divorced. Daddy had a new lover. You remember where it is. Yeah, outside, right? This is a small establishment that does not have its own restrooms. Wait, you're leaving? Oh, <laughs> scared of me, huh? No, it's just... um... Mama, keep an eye on her. Sure thing. Don't have too much fun in there.
Iba, get boss on the line. Got it. What's up? Mizuki is at a bar called Marble down in Golden Yokocho. Send someone over to pick her up. She's not at the hospital? Uh, yeah, she snuck out. I took her along while I was doing some work, but I can't take her any further. Understood. I'll send someone. Counting on you, boss. Are you going to leave Mizuki here? Yes. I can't take her into a Yakuza den. Who's this asshole? You made a big mistake coming here. Go home. All right. Bye then. Hey, Date. What? Ugh, I hate dealing with these chumps. Didn't you hear me? Do you want to die, old man? <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> Sorry for the late introduction. I'm with the MPD. A cop, huh? So, you want to explain what the fuck a cop is doing in my office? I think we should exchange names before exchanging expletives. Name's MoMA, the warhorse. Don't give a fuck what your name is. All right, MoMA. I have a few things I want to ask you. What do you know about the new Cyclops serial killings? Shoko Nadami and Renju Okiura had their left eye pulled out and were murdered. And I think you know something about it. Saw it on the news. But we had nothing to do with it. Even if we did, we wouldn't spill to no cops. There would be no point in talking to him in that state. Hey, Iba, look. A flying squirrel taking a nap. It is clearly a tiger. Hey, Iba, it's pronounced partition and not partition. I know how it's pronounced. I got nothing to say to you. dragon a bronze dragon holding a golden ball golden ball huh what does a guy like the chairman need this for he probably just uses it for porn not every man in the world is like you date Kind of frightening seeing all these lanterns lined up. Scary lanterns. Scary lanterns. You don't have to repeat it.
Squeak, squeak. Wait, hold on. Did you make that mouse squeaking sound? I did. Wasn't it cute? Have you fallen back in love with me? Back in love? <laughs> what? The chairman is right in front of you. What? I run the Kumakura gang. I'm Moma Kumakura. That can't be right. The chairman of the Kumakuras is Rohan. You aren't the chairman. Yo, asshole! You need a lesson in manners? Date, wait. I did some research and discovered that Rohan Kumakura died last year. He leapt to his death from the roof of a building. A suicide? But MoMA did not take over last year. MoMA took over six years ago. Six years ago? Don't know nothing about her. I know her face and her name. It was on the news. Nothing else. Shoko is part of an investment fraud scheme. And I have it on good authority that a certain Yakuza gang was helping her. Wouldn't know nothing about that, cop. I told you, I got nothing to say. You deaf or something? Date, a minute please. What is it? Do you see the sofa in the reception area? There is an ashtray on top of the coffee table. What about it? It is peculiar. Thermal imaging reveals that they are both warm. The sofa and ashtray. Hey, Aiba, can you turn off the thermal vision? Sure. I see. The cigarette brand is Klein. Why is that relevant? Small details will come in useful later. Trust me. Hmm. Part of the cushion is still red. Just as I thought. What are you talking about? You're the first guest today. Although you are an uninvited guest. Don't lie now. Someone was sitting on the sofa and smoking very recently. How do you know that? I just do. All right, I remember now. Just a bit ago, one of our guys was on the sofa. Are you talking about these guys right here? Yeah. Not possible. When I came in... You made a big mistake coming here. Go home. Who's this asshole? Neither of them was on the sofa, and neither of them was smoking. They left. Who left? Uh, an insurance salesman. Right before you came in. I don't think so. I didn't pass by anyone on my way here, and I happen to know this office only has one entrance and one exit. Which means, whoever it is, they're still in this office somewhere. Let me check the back. Why you want to do that? I just wanted to say hello to our guest. I'm telling you, you're the only one here. Oh, then you won't mind me checking. Just get out of here, cop. There must be someone they don't want us to see. Somewhere behind that wall.
Just as I thought. This must be whoever was sitting on the sofa and smoking earlier. My revolver can shoot right through this wall. I should shoot him. Wait! Hmm, is he not getting enough? What? Never mind. The person behind the wall is unarmed. I cannot approve the use of a revolver in this situation. Damn it. A porno mag at your feet. What? Hey, did you just shoot at me? Whoa, wait a minute! with explosive rounds. Aim for the dragon's gold ball on the right. The what? Oh, that. Why? Just do it! Iba, you saved me. Everything happened as I simulated it. So, where's this porno mag? You idiot. There is no adult magazine. However, I know that your reaction time is up to 3.6 times faster when you are excited. I simply took advantage of that behavior. What the hell? You're a grown man. Aren't you too old to be playing with toys? Shit! Hey, coward! I see you! Show your face! I know you! Sejima, so, Congressman. What is this guy doing here? Us Kumakuras are a branch of the Ujisaki family. The Ujisaki family runs a yearly golf tournament 
mandatory attendance. We were all at the tournament those days. We only got back this morning. You can ask a hotel, they'll tell you. Date, I did some research. The hotel's record of guests does list the Kumakura members. They were also seen on several surveillance cameras. It is not possible that any of the Kumakuras could have killed Shoko, including Moma. I heard that the former head of the Kumakuras committed suicide last year. Yeah, what's it to you? Nothing at all. I just want to talk about it. Rohan was my older brother. He was my big brother in this organization, and my blood brother. Six years ago, he, uh... He got sick in the head. He got sent to a special hospital. And naturally, because I'm his brother and next in line, I was the successor. That's all I'm gonna say. You wanna know more? Hire a private eye. Ah. <sighs> Well, I guess there's no point hiding it now. I lied earlier, when I said I didn't know her. I thought so. You and the Kumakuras were a part of the fraud scheme Shoka was organizing. Yep. Whenever any wise-ass investors gave her trouble, we handled it. Exactly as I suspected. Shoko was affiliated with the Kumakuras. I've been looking after that guy since high school. It was the usual stuff. I had him help me with a lot of work. But now, it's kind of the opposite, you know? We're getting work from him. Well, we were. Now that he's dead, though. What work did he have you do? Eh, the usual. If Talon at his office was causing trouble or something... You ever get into any disputes with Renju doing this work? No way, he paid good money. I've never even gotten into an argument with the guy. I've had a relationship with the Kumakura since back when Rohan was running things. I had business nearby, so I stopped here for a visit. Whatever conspiracy theory you're imagining in your head, you can forget it. This is strictly business. Strictly business? A congressman meeting with Yakuza? How are you gonna spin that? It's true. I imagine my public image will be dragged through the mud. But we haven't done anything illegal. If you want to accuse me of such wrongdoing, then by all means. I just happen to think such gossip is better suited for tabloids. The president of Lemniscate? We aren't friends, but I did meet him a few times through work. What work were you doing to meet up with the head of an entertainment company? It was just some party hosted by some company or other. It's not unusual. Events with those uptight stuffed shirts can be rather dull. So they have some young women from an entertainment office attend. Anyway, we only saw each other a few times. I don't even remember what we spoke about. The victim prior to Renju? I believe Moma introduced me to her. Introduced? We were just having drinks. Shoko stopped by to say hello. Right. We didn't talk about anything. They're trying to give me the runaround. Indeed. I went to work. <laughs> then went home. So, you have no alibi? No, I always have my bodyguards near me. If you want to, you can ask them. Bodyguard testimony can be unreliable. There is a possibility that they would lie to protect Mr. Sejima. I agree. We can't trust that. Date, I have determined that these individuals have nothing further to add. Even if they are involved, 
they will not volunteer any more information. We need solid evidence to move forward with the investigation. You're right. Date, a call from Lemniscate. Connected. Date, it's me. Um, you remember like how you said to call you if I to came? Well, he's here now, so I guess I'm calling you. Got it. I'm on my way. Where are you going? That's none of your concern. MoMA, Congressman Sejima, I think I'm gonna call it a day. I'll come back soon. We'll swap drinking stories. You serious? Hmm. Let's go, Iba. Roger. This is all really suspicious. What is? Congressman Sejima and the Kumakuras. There's definitely something going on there. I agree. But I am not sure it is linked to the new Cyclops serial killings. We need to do further investigation. Who are you? Impossible. How did a jellyfish get in here? So shiny, too. You utter idiot. It's me. Renju? Do I look like Renju? Izuki? It's me. Boss? Date, seriously. Then... are you... Mom? They must have increased your dosage too much. My dosage? Anyway, you're Iba, right? Why are you here, looking like that? I just thought I would project myself. You seem lonely. How are you doing this? I am overlaying the image your left eye processes with augmented reality. You can't see me through your right eye, only your left. You can't just pop into my eyeball without permission. You do realize I do that all the time, right? Come to think of it, you look kind of like you do when you're insomnia. What's that about? What do you mean? Well, you don't usually look like that. You have a somnium form and another form. Oh, this? Yes, that. Why are you doing this now? I was bored last night, so... Huh? I thought you would like it. Why would I like it? Well, I did attempt to shape myself to your preference. If you could do that, change it. I will not. Why not? Because I won't. I fear you would eventually grow tired of the other form as well. I just wanted to change my look a little. Think of it as a haircut. Pretty drastic haircut. As I said earlier, I completely agree that they are suspicious but there is nothing currently linking them to the case. That's true. We have no established motive. The victims were displayed, tied up on a horse, hung from the ceiling, and their left eyes taken out. We still don't know why. It is possible that Shoko and Renju were disloyal to Congressman Sejima and the Kumakuras. They could have been killed and displayed as a warning. That would fit the current evidence. Huh, maybe. But it doesn't feel right. 
I looked into that. Unfortunately, I did not find anything in our database that could connect the two. I see. However, I did discover some rumors on the internet. Most of them come across as gossip or conspiracy theories, but would you like to hear them regardless? Please. Mr. Sejima currently resides in Azabu. He lives in a mansion, a restored samurai castle. But 20 years ago, So Sejima lived elsewhere. In the Kawasaki district, to be exact. He lived there until he was 40 years old. The Sejima family owned a vast amount of real estate in the district. Adjusting for inflation, the land was valued above 30 billion yen. The Sejima family sold off its holdings. Six months later, the incident occurred. The explosion at the chemical plant. This caused Kabasaki to become a restricted area. And of course, land prices fell drastically to less than 1 30th their original value. Hmm. What are your thoughts? The timing is certainly suspicious. To sell that amount of land just six months before it happened. There is another interesting fact. After the accident, Sosejima purchased all of the land back for just 1 billion yen. So he's got 29 billion yen in his pocket and 1 billion yen of land. Correct. Despite the horrific accident, the Sejima family is no worse off. True. But I don't see the point of it. It's not like he got anything out of it. That would be true, but there is more to this story. There is another important fact. After the land prices in the Kabasaki region crashed, Oh, and we will have to continue this conversation later. I am receiving a call from headquarters. Is this Special Agent Date from Abyss? My name is Akaska, from HQ. I'm investigating the Shoko Nadami case. There's something that you need to hear. What is it? We got a phone call earlier. From a prisoner at Fuchu Prison. A prisoner? We saved the call. I think you should give it a listen. Who is this? In here? I'm known as number 89. What is this call concerning? I know who killed Shoko Nadami. And if you let me out of here, I will tell you who it is. I suppose you might say I'm looking for a plea bargain. He will kill again, you know. And he'll take their eye while they're still alive. There will be more bodies. If you want to stop this serial killer, I suggest you take my offer. I'll be seeing you. This has to be a prank. That's what I thought, too. However, we got the call yesterday afternoon. Before Renju was killed. In other words... You're saying he predicted the second crime? Yeah, I think he did. That's why I thought I should contact you. Good idea. Thanks, Detective. Good luck. Do you think there's anything to this? I don't know. Oh, Date. What's wrong? You look like you have a lot on your mind. Yeah. I just found out online. The corpse at Bloom Park. That was Renju's ex-wife, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So that was Mizuki's mom. Mizuki saw her own mom. And I just... I just left her. But I didn't know! I knew her as Shoko Nadami. Her last name is different. I didn't know that was Mizuki's mother. I want to apologize to her. I need to tell her that I'm sorry.
Date, look! A little stink bug! Yay! A stink bug! That one is called Lying, Wishing, Marking Demons. Oh, that's Rune Doyer. Who is that? That's just a high stool. What about high school? I said stool. One more bowl, please. That would be soba. Hey, girl with the big tits. Um, excuse me? Shit, I said it to her face. I want to run away and never look back. You get asked out a lot, don't you? I don't know why you're sitting here behind a desk. You should be an idol. <laughs> oh, thank you. But, despite my looks, I am a bit too old to be an idol. I couldn't get into it now. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I turned 36 this year. You're kidding. <laughs> No problem. After all, it means we get to see each other again. I'm glad. Hey now, that's awfully aggressive. You're an alpha type, aren't you? I kind of like that. And I kind of like you. Oh, but there is one little thing you should know about me. I'm a reptilian. Is that going to be a problem? What's a reptilian? A reptilian humanoid alien. They are said to be shapeshifters that take on human form. Yeah, that is definitely going to be a problem. Oh, too bad. She's recording a podcast right now. Looking at her schedule, it should end soon. Nowhere. Just doing my normal routine. I don't know your normal routine. I went to a doujin store to look at the new releases. Then I ate some ramen at Juro's, and then headed over to the PC cafe to browse threads. You know, normal. That's normal. I haven't had a normal day in my life. Mizuki didn't seem like she was angry with you. What? You met Mizuki? Oh, at the interrogation. That's right. He doesn't know I live with Mizuki. I have no reason to hide it, but it's sort of hard to explain. Yeah, I spoke to Mizuki at her, um, questioning earlier. You're sick, Date. What? Questioning? That sounds dirty. If I were writing a light novel, that's exactly how I would describe a sexy scene. What kind of novels are you writing, kid? Uh, I don't know.
know anything. I've only seen Renju a couple of times. I didn't think it was possible to be this bad at lying. Though it is plainly obvious, I did a thermal check on Ota's body. This is his current body temperature. That's what I thought. Have you forgotten, Ota? You're my thrall. You don't want me to tell Iris your secret, do you? Huh? W wait it's no big deal, I just... You better start talking. Okay. Last night, I was walking over to Sunfish Pocket, and I saw Renju come out of the building. Was he alone? Someone was with him. A man. No. A woman. Um... Okay, look. I can tell you're trying to protect her, but you have to help me out here. Was it Iris? N no it definitely for sure wasn't Tessa. Got it. So Renju was with Iris. Okay, fine. There's no point in hiding it, I guess. You're right. Renju came out of the building with Tessa. But Tessa has nothing to do with this. She wouldn't murder anyone. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She's an idol. Idols don't kill people. You need to stop putting her on a pedestal. Tessa is a savior to me. The Tessa I know wouldn't hurt anyone. The first time I met her, I had a bad case of writer's block. And I saw all this awful negativity online and... I lost sight of what I really wanted to write. And it was the lowest point of my life. He is talking like a professional, though he hasn't published anything. Yeah. Then, by pure chance, I found a video of Tessa singing and dancing, and it made me realize something important. You don't have to care what people think, you know? If you do your best at what you believe in, your message will get through to people. That attitude is something all great creators need to have. After that, I became a huge ASET fan and got over my writer's block. And I know I'm not the only one Tessa has inspired. A lot of otaku like me say that Tessa is their savior. She cheers them up when they're down. So there's no way Tessa can be involved in murder. Absolutely impossible. But do you suspect her? I need to hear her side of the story. If I do, I might find out she's totally innocent. If you truly believe that she didn't do it, you should tell me everything you know. But... Do it for Iris. Around 6.15, I guess. Where did they go? I didn't see. They got into Renju's car and drove off. And what did you do? I went inside Sunfish Pocket. But I saw a sign that said the entire club was reserved. I figured I would just go home. What happened? Date. Iris, there's something I need to ask you. Come with me. Iris, I'm going to ask you some questions. Please answer honestly. However, you do not have to say anything that might incriminate you. The right to remain silent? You're treating me like a criminal. Not exactly. I'm just looking for the truth, and I would appreciate your cooperation. This is the camera used to record the interrogation. 
Images captured by this camera are sent to the database in real time. It is later saved permanently on our servers. You can remotely control it as well. Here's what Ota told me. Yesterday around 6.15 p.m., you and Renju came out of the Sunfish Pocket Building. Is that true? Yes. Mr. Okira called me and told me he wanted me to come to Sunfish Pocket, ASAP. Around what time was that? 5 p.m., I think. I got ready, then headed over there. I guess I got there about an hour later. Date, I checked her call history. At 4.58 p.m., there is a record of a call to Iris from Renju's phone. What were you doing with Renju? He asked me about a job. What kind of job? He rented out Sunfish Pocket for a party and he wanted me to MC. He said that it was an important party and that a lot of big shots were going to be there. But the girl he asked to do it originally got sick and couldn't come. But I turned him down. Why? Because I'm just an internet idol. I've never done any MCing before. Especially with important people being there. What did you do after you turned him down? I left with Mr. Okira. At 6.15pm. That must have been when Ota saw me. And after that? I asked Mr. Okira to take me home in his car. I got home at 7pm. I was home the rest of the night. What do you think, Iba? I cannot detect any contradictions. However, her story appears almost too organized. Human memory is ambiguous. Her use of exact times leads me to be suspicious. That's true. I heard you used to work at Sunfish Pocket. That's right. How long? A little over a year. Working there that long, you're probably pretty familiar with the equipment. Yeah, I guess. What about the surveillance camera? Do you know where those tapes were stored? What are you trying to say? When did you find out Renju was killed? This morning, on the news. And you were with Renju last night? You didn't think to call the police and inform them of this? Oh, sorry. Is that something you're supposed to do? I had a podcast to record this morning, so... If I went to the police, I'd be late. And that would cause everyone a lot of trouble, you know? What were you doing from 7 to 9 last night? I was at home the whole time. You're sure? Yes. Iba, thermograph. There is no noticeable rise in Iris's body temperature. She isn't lying. Not necessarily. We must consider the possibility that she is a natural liar. But with that kind of confidence, her temperature wouldn't change. Correct. Renju's estimated time of death was 8 p.m. last night. If Iris's story is true, she couldn't have done it. There is another possibility. Even if Iris was at home, she could have killed Renju. You mean... I'll ask again. You are sure you were at home around 8 p.m. yesterday? Yes. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? You can, but there'd be no point. Why is that? My mom was at home. She came back home early this morning. This morning? Yeah. Where was she? I don't know. You don't know. Come to think of it, Iris's mom had connections to Renju too. Hitomi did mention that yesterday. 
Renju was my classmate at Eitoku High. We've known each other for 20 years now. However, we have nothing to link her to the case. But I am curious. What was Hitomi doing last night? Am I a suspect? It's not like that. It's fine, Date. It's true that I met with Mr. Okiura yesterday, but... How do I put this? It's impossible that I'm the killer. Why? I'm a teenage girl! Mr. Okiura is a fully grown man. Oh, she's got a point. A girl like her could have stabbed, poisoned, or shot him dead, but... Strangling? No, it's still possible. You see... Renju's estimated TOD is yesterday, around 8 p.m. Numerous hemorrhages in the blood vessels of the throat and face indicate strangulation. The weapon used to commit the murder was some kind of twisted cloth. The criminal likely wrapped it around Renju's neck and pulled. Renju then suffocated. The more precise cause of death is cerebral circulation failure due to vessel closure in the neck. In short, Renju was strangled from behind with some kind of cloth or rope. The autopsy determined that Renju vacated his bowels from muscle relaxation upon death. However, no trace of this was found on the corpse or at the scene. This means that it is highly likely Renju was killed elsewhere and moved to where he was found. Renju's corpse was discovered at the Maid Cafe Sunfish Pocket, hanging from a beam on the ceiling by a wire. He was found over the counter. The wire was attached on both ends. One end was attached to a hook that was embedded inside Renju's jaw. The other end was attached to beer kegs found on the floor. The kegs hold approximately 20 liters of liquid. They weigh approximately 55 pounds each. The autopsy discovered a high concentration of benzodiazepine in Renju's body. This drug is commonly used as a sedative. It is likely that Renju was in a state of compromised consciousness before his death. Sunfish Pocket is located on the second floor. According to the records, from 6.30 p.m. until the body was found, the elevator stopped on the second floor only once. At 8.55 p.m., the total weight detected in the elevator was approximately 310 pounds. I know this watch. It's Renju's favorite. I found it inside an oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. That means... The oil drum inside Sunfish Pocket. The type that has a lid you can open with about a 200 liter capacity. Empty, it weighs approximately 44 pounds. A heavy concentration of sedatives were discovered in Renju's body. Renju was practically in a coma before he died. He wouldn't have struggled. So, Iris could have strangled him. Wait a minute. Even if I was somehow able to kill him, the rest of it is impossible. The rest of it? Like hanging up his body? How do you know that? What do you mean? It's all over the news. That's true. Renju weighed about 160 pounds. Even if she used her entire body weight, I don't think she could have hauled him up. Right. It would be hard for her to do it with her strength alone. But with a little ingenuity, it could be done. Ingenuity?
I don't think so, Date. This is irrelevant to the question of how to lift Renju's body. It went like this. First, Renju was laid out on the counter. Next, the wire was thrown over the beam and connected to the hook in his jaw. Then all you need to do is put the three beer kegs on the counter. You think a teenage girl could have done that? I'm sure it was hard. The kegs weighed 55 pounds each. But that's not impossible, even for a teenage girl. I guess it isn't impossible. After that, you get on top of the counter, hook the other end of the wires to the kegs, and then, what do you think happens if you kick the kegs off the counter? The three kegs weighed 165 pounds altogether. Renju weighs five pounds less. Hmm, I guess that would make it possible. But... But there is one more thing. What? Considering the state of the crime scene, it's clear Renju was killed elsewhere and brought to where we found him. If Iris is the culprit, how did she move the body? Hey! I know, I know. You're going to say you couldn't have moved a 160-pound body. Unfortunately for her, she could have. How? Do you know what this is? It's Renju's favorite watch. This was discovered inside an empty oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. Hey, Date, I know you're on a roll right now, but could you please report things like that according to protocol? What are you trying to say? I'm saying that it wouldn't be so hard to move a body if it were in a cylinder. You would just have to roll it. So you're saying Renju's body was moved inside the drum, which is how the watch came off. But the suspect didn't notice it. I'm not saying anything for sure. Just pointing out that it's possible. I didn't do it! You don't even have any witnesses! If I were rolling an oil drum in the middle of the street, people would have noticed! You could have put it in a car and driven it. I don't have a license! Doesn't mean you can't drive. Even an AI can drive nowadays. Are you mocking me? Don't make sudden outbursts like that. You insulted me! Just be... Quiet. Um... Who are you talking to? Anyway, Iris, you weigh about 105 pounds, right? Where is this coming from? If only you weighed more. Or less. That is none of your business. No, I mean that your weight is relevant to the case. If the oil drum was used to transport the corpse, then the possibility of the suspect being around 105 pounds is extremely likely. Why do you say that? Iris, on which floor is Sunfish Pocket located? On the second floor. That's right. So, I checked the elevator records. Before the corpse was discovered, the elevator only stopped at the second floor once, at 8.55 p.m. And we discovered that the total cargo weight on the elevator was about 310 pounds. Renju weighed 160. The oil drum weighs 44. Together, that's about 205. Subtracting that from 310, this doesn't look good. Why are you... Now this obviously doesn't prove you're the murderer. A lot of people weigh 105 pounds. 
Or someone could have put 105 extra pounds in the elevator, sent it up, and taken the stairs to throw us off the trail. However, Date, stop. Iris is acting strange. Don't turn around. Why not? Just stay put. Keep your eyes on the wall. There are several cameras in this room. Two surveillance cameras installed at the corners of the ceiling, and one camera on a tripod. I hacked each to gain access to their recordings. Look at this. She's fidgeting around. Is she doing something under the desk? That's what it looks like. But we need to confirm something before we confront her. We need to know that she is in fact doing something under the desk. Without turning around? Yes. How would I do that? Iris, what are you thinking? What is that thing? Hey, answer me, Iris! She's definitely hiding something, Date. Sync with her. Iris is experiencing REM sleep. Medication is working perfectly. How about it, Tate? Think you can do it? Not a problem. Get it started. The time limit is six minutes. So before time is up... I know. Then, let's begin. What is this place? It looks depressing. How is this related to Iris? Unknown, but there must be a connection. Iris, what are you hiding? Some.
scan. Activate! What? A CRT TV. Fixing it by hitting it is an old-fashioned approach. Well, this is an old-fashioned object, so... What was that just now? A child's drawing of a rat. Iris must have drawn it. It is not yet possible to determine that. Let's continue the investigation. There is much to interact with. I see many objects in the room. What? The explosions appear to have stopped. The explosions made the room change. This is a dangerous dream, but we must continue. An operating table. Surgery? For whom? Just act it out. Act it out? This is not a children's playtime. It might help reproduce a memory. I feel like I'm on a... Medical Dragon Team! Something has spawned! You want to check it out? Four minutes. Just a locker. That was close. If this were the Delta Princess, I would have been stabbed. Why was it booby trapped? I do not see anything else inside. Would you like me to examine the knife? Good idea.
The knife that flew out of the locker. Like this? What? I only threw it lightly. An oil drum, television, and torso. I think I understand. I'm starting to see the picture. I do not yet understand it. An oil drum. What does this mean? Bullets? They might be used for something. Let's keep them. Three minutes, Dante. A revolver. Is it real? It appears that way. Can we use the bullets we found earlier? This could work. I'll try shooting it. What happened during that Somnium? We saw the whole thing on the monitor. But we're just as confused as you are. Well, upon further reflection, it is not so strange. Dreams are developed outside of our conscious will. When you sink into Somnium, there is no guarantee of what you will discover. What about the figure? Could have been Iris herself. That is a possibility. The Sinker sees the subject's dream from the third person. That means that Iris... She must have met So Sejima somewhere. We did see Congressman Sejima in there. We saw that shadow kiss him, too. Did that happen in reality? Not necessarily. I'm sure you've had dreams of kiss... celebrities and porn stars, right? The first part, yes, but the second part, no. You sure about that? 
Anyway, you know what I mean. A dream is not made up entirely of memories. It can include things outside of your memory, like TV or movies. Even if the figure was supposed to be Iris, her smooch insomnium does not necessarily reflect her actions in reality. You can't use the word smooch. Why not? So we don't know if Iris and So are acquainted. That's right, because So is a celebrity of sorts. It's possible she just saw him on TV or online. Date, Iris is about to wake up. Got it. Putting me to sleep when I wasn't expecting it? You cops are more rough than I thought. You signed a consent form before you came in here, didn't you? You forced me to sign it. Anyway, Iris, I have some things I want to ask you. What? Can you please take me with you? As long as I have Wi-Fi, I don't need anything else. Sorry, we can't have pets. Hm. Cold-hearted old man. Is this the cold storage warehouse? Seems to be. Not a manga cafe? Or an otaku shop? No, but a warehouse is a commonly used location in live-action dramas. You know a lot. Predicting this, I did some research on Ota's taste. I see. By the way, are you smaller? Either that, or everything else is... bigger. Interesting. Hey, that's...
Iris is about to be... Stop right there! The heavens call, the earth cries out, the crowds roar! All calling on me to strike back against evil! Hold on, Tessa! I will save you! Yeah! I will protect Tessa! Uh, is this from the stream we saw earlier? This is Ota's memory of it. It appears to be a bit exaggerated. All right, let's help reproduce the memory. Somnium scan, activate! You polar bear! I will. The ice on the floor is. Agent Date, you've got four minutes. An oil drum, though it is lying down. Eventually stopped thinking. That's Tessa. St stand your ground. Odamatsu Shida cowers to no one. I have to fight back with something! It appears to be a power panel. This is an ice cold one. Iba, aim for the switch. Position target in the center and hit the switch. Position target in the center and hit the switch. Did he really help Iris like that? Regardless of the truth, right now, I am Ota's last hope. I have to help him up! This is annoying. You have three minutes, Dante. Ota looks frightened. He cannot stand. You're so cool, my shiny, glittery Ota. 
So cool. The ghost inside me whispered. Yeah, I am cool, huh? From now on, this is my stage. Maybe this! Dante, you've hit the limit! Time's up! Wait! I can almost make out their face! Pewter, force shutdown! Stop! Stop it! What were you thinking? You can only stay insomnium for six minutes. Any longer and you risk getting your mind completely taken over by the subject. I know. No, you clearly don't. This isn't just about you, Date. If your consciousness erodes inside of Somnium, you put the subject in danger as well. If I may? Fortunately, there were no abnormalities detected in the brainwaves after the sink. Date and Ota both read normal. Although, the timing was really close. What was I supposed to do? You saw it, boss. You too, Pewter. I was about to see the culprit's face. Not necessarily. We need to verify that Ota did, in fact, see the culprit's face. That's the only way it could have ended up in his Somnium. Well, Ota? Huh? You saw the killer's face at the warehouse, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see their face. If I did, I would have told you guys already. You see? I mean, I did try to get a look at them, when the polar bear fell over. They looked like they were knocked out, so I tried to grab the head part. But as soon as I did, I got stabbed in my gut. That is what we witnessed in his Somnium. Yeah. I wish I could climb up on that table and fly around the world on it with Tessa. What kind of fantasy is that? Did you hear something just now? I did not. Perhaps you're imagining it. Date, look! That haunted girl is crawling out of the well. Well, why not give knife hunting a whirl? Are you glitching out or something? Thank you. 
I know it was dangerous to sink past the time limit. That was my fault, and I'm sorry. Are you really sorry? Yes. Then you owe me some Dom P at my favorite club in Kabukicho. Or, you can lick my shoes. Either or. It's all right. As I mentioned earlier, both your brainwaves are normal. However, I'm sure there was some overload. You should go home and get some rest. I've been better. I'm still a little drowsy. What about your stab wound? My what? Oh! Oh, it hurts. It started acting up suddenly. Ow! It's because you grabbed me and forced me to come here, Date! Don't blame me, that was boss. I'll sue you for this! Oh, come on. Or, how about this? Get me one of the straws Tessa used, and I won't sue you. I see Ota is back to his healthy self. Guess so. Because I was scared. Scared? The killer could come here to finish the job. But you didn't get a good look at their face, right? But they don't know that. I had it prepared just in case. You know what I'm talking about, right, Date? Preparing in advance in case you might need it. Like making sure your room is nice and clean before you go to a party. Oh, sorry. You probably don't have any experience with that. I have more experience than you. Ota, let me ask you something. When you were fighting the polar bear back at the warehouse, did the crane hook get stuck on the polar bear's leg? Now that you mention it, maybe it did. Maybe? It's like I told you, I don't really remember much. With all the tension and excitement and fear and adrenaline, my mind just went blank. But now that we're talking about it, I remember. Yeah, no doubt about it. The crane hook got stuck on the polar bear's left leg. And then, when the hook got pulled out, Blood sprayed all over. Date, I checked all of the hospitals in the metropolitan area. None have a record of a patient admitted after 3 a.m. with a wound to the left leg. If what I saw in Somnium is how it happened in real life, that was a deep wound. He definitely would have needed first aid. Perhaps a friend or accomplice helped them. You think there are multiple killers? That is not what I said. They may have helped the culprit, but not necessarily been involved in the crimes. So we know that the culprit has a deep wound on their left leg. That information could be crucial in catching them. Date, get out there. Look for people with an injured left leg. How exactly? Can't you just go ask around or something? Are you serious? Do you know how many people live in this city? What? Date, what is the matter? Date! Are you alright? <sighs> hey, this is...
Oh, you're alive. The Suki? What happened? You drank too much at the club and passed out. Liar. I remember everything until I collapsed in the control room. You did something dangerous during the sink last night, didn't you? Your brain got overloaded and you passed out. That's what Pewter and Boss said. You met them? They brought you over. They said to let you sleep it off because you were tired from the investigation. I'm off today. Why? Today is Tuesday. You should have school. You really can be an insensitive jerk, can't you? I'm taking the day off for morning. I see. Oh, Date's brain is rotting away. He won't last long now. You should probably prepare for a funeral soon. So they told you I'm completely fine, huh? Hmm. I detect no noticeable damage to your brain. You should not have any issue continuing the investigation. He probably went back to the hospital. Boss told Mizuki about Ota being synced. And about what happened at the cold storage warehouse. Why did she tell her all that? Mizuki was asking about the status of the investigation. The girl has lost both her parents. I am sure Boss felt that she deserved to know. Hey, will you take me with you? I told you yesterday, Mizuki. I won't put you in danger like that. But you're close to catching the culprit, right? The killer has an injury on their left leg. Boss said you need to find them. Let me help you. No, you stay here. Date, don't you know how I feel? My parents are dead. I saw their bodies with my own eyes. If I don't do something, I'm going to go crazy. Date. Please. <laughs> Date, consider Mizuki's feelings. She is lonely. Mizuki has not been with Renju and Shoko for four years. But clearly, she still feels a bond to them. A bond that was broken by the murderer. With her parents gone, Mizuki has almost no one. She can only depend on one person now. You know to whom I am referring. Fine, let's go. You're gonna take me? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Date. Here, wipe your tears. We're heading out. Date, I must admit I am at a disadvantage. The clue that the culprit is injured on their left leg does not help me narrow down suspects significantly. 
we need to revisit the scene. It's possible that we might find the culprit at one of the crime scenes. Or ask around the city for further information. I remember telling you before, that Bloom Park is an important part of my memories. Before it shut down, I came here a lot with Daddy and Mom. They fought a lot, but sometimes they got along. Whenever we were here, it was one of those sometimes days. I remember it clearly. I was just a little girl, but it was so rare to see them laughing together. That's why I remember it so well. I remember riding the merry-go-round like this. Mom was standing right next to me. She was holding me, so I wouldn't fall. I couldn't get on many of them because I was so little. But I did ride the Ferris wheel. And the Panda ride. They're kinda tame now, but at the time they were really fun. I was having so much fun it felt... wrong. Like it was too good to be true. Daddy was on the outside taking pictures of me and Mom. He was on the other side of the fence with an old camera. Every time we passed in front of him, Mom and I would wave our hands. <laughs> we sound like a happy family, huh? He must have gotten good pictures. No, actually. We tried developing them at the park, but they came out all blurry and out of focus. But Mom wasn't mad or upset or anything. She just started laughing. That might have been the first and last time the three of us laughed out loud together. <laughs> 